My name is Christopher Daniels. This is Mark Out Radio. It's time once again for another thrilling episode of Mark Out Radio. Of Mark Out Radio. For the next hour, sit back, pull the stick out of your ass, and enjoy. Be warned, though. Smarks and internet know-it-alls will be offended, annoyed, and generally pissed off at what's about to happen to your ear holes. You've been warned. Now, Mark Out Radio. That's right. Back again. Told you I'd be back for the fucking pay-per-view. What am I going to do? Not do that one? I mean, I guess I could, but that'd just be harsh. All right, uh, Dave, back with you on Markout Radio. We're going to do the, um, I guess, uh, the old school predictions kind of show. Uh, last night, my buddy Glenn had his usual show, and uh, he and uh, Rebel and I came up with uh, with our predictions. Um <laughs> Some of them were a little controversial. Uh, some of the entire show was a little controversial, if I'm honest. But uh, listen, that's that's just the awesome way to do a wrestling show. Yeah, how do you do a wrestling show and not be controversial? I guess is the point of all that. Uh, anyways, so uh, welcome back. Um, don't know if chat's working properly. The uh, you can always hit it up on Twitter if you like. Uh, I'm not really sure if uh, I'm not really sure what the hell is going on with that deal. But whatever. I don't give a shit, really. If I'm perfectly honest, um, it just distracts me from the rest of this train wreck. Anyways, uh, welcome back to the show. As I said, um, listen, no mercy's coming up. Um, have we got multiple theme songs again? I don't know. I I I've, I keep hearing rumblings that there are multiple theme songs, um, but you know, at least that's not money in the bank. It could be worse, where you've got the same theme song for fucking ever. Uh, but you know, it is what it is. So, uh, yeah, I won't be paying attention to chat. If you want to hit me up while the show's live, hit it up on Twitter. Uh, otherwise, don't worry about it. Uh, well, I'm, sure we'll, I'm sure we'll all be tweeting our stupid little hearts out later. Um, all right, so No Mercy being um, one of the raw brand specific pay-per-views is, um, well, I listen, it's actually not a terrible pay-per-view from a booking standpoint. I mean, there are some, there are some weak matches. Um, I will, I will admit that there are some weak matches. Um, there definitely are weak feuds, um, weak builds, but I mean, it's, you know, it is what it is. Um, <clears throat> a match that was added during the week here was the, um, Apollo Cruz and, uh, an Elias. I guess he's just Elias instead of Elias Sampson now. I don't, I don't know, whatever. Um, but Apollo Cruz is part of Titus O'Neil world worldwide, which is just, awful i mean the the guy goes from being the next john cena or being promoted by the fucking announced him as the next john cena to basically um being the manager of a 205 wrestler and by the way while we're talking about the 205 wrestlers why the flying fuck i mean i get it you don't want the competition but they they bought up a uh, apollo cruz they bought up elias samson um and then they basically saddled them both with shitty gimmicks uh the guys go out and perform their fucking hearts out in wrestling matches but ultimately have god awful fucking gimmicks um elias is a is a terrible rip off of a uh, of a of a bad character in a uh in a really well listen it wasn't that bad we don't get a whole lot of punisher movies so it wasn't uh, that wasn't that bad but elias is just a real bad ripoff of uh of one of the characters in there so um it is what it is uh we we basically have a pre-show with two guys the wwe bought up and then didn't do anything with you know I, like as usual right it's not as usual oh well, that's that's too bad but um i don't know it it is what it is it looks like technically even though they've talked about a few different things uh no mercy has uh as a single theme song um which i'll, I'll thrill your eardrums with in ocean to take me away. which i mean to be fair it does sound like an Elias Sampson song. So there's that, folks. Um, I'll just play in the background here, I think. Um, anyways, so Cruz and Elias, 
Um, I I hate saying this because I enjoy both of these guys as far as work as far as their in ring work goes. Um, I guess I'll take Elias just because the feud will continue if I take Elias. Whereas if I take Cruz, then at least he's getting quote unquote redemption and and he's you know coming out on top or whatever. I I guess I don't know. That's sort of where I'm sliding in here. I get uh, it's. It's a little bit hard to care because they don't make you care. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. No, it probably doesn't make sense. It's wrestling. Of course it doesn't make sense. So anyways, I'm, I'm picking Elias on that one. I'm going to go with the way the, the card is outlined um, on the website that I got it from. So expect that the uh, match order will fuck around a little bit during the, the show. Uh, if you want to make your predictions, shoot an email over to MLRMarkout at uh, gmail.com. Uh, anytime before the live show goes or the pre-show match goes, that's what I'll do. I'll accept them right up until the pre-show match starts. Anyways, uh, then, uh, we're going to have an IC title match, a title that doesn't get defended a whole lot on pay-per-views and, uh, Miz is taking on Jason Jordan. Now the angle gimmick aside, Jason Jordan is actually pretty impressive. Um, he's kind of a departure from the usual guys that WWE turns into megastars. I mean, by kind of a departure, I mean like he's one of those legit wrestler types um, that I know that they... I know if you guys have been watching wrestling for long enough, you remember that Kurt Angle had this whole stable and shit like that. But let's be perfectly honest. Um, this is something that the WWE hasn't the whole, done a whole hell of a lot of in recent years. There you go. That's how I'll preface that one. Um, so, they're... But they're... Again, they're putting an awful lot of pressure on the kid. Um Sometimes that works out. Sometimes it don't. Uh, sometimes it really don't. But um, I don't know. We'll see what happens with it. It'll be interesting to see what, what goes down. Um, with this match, I mean, of course, you've got Jason Jordan basically alone. And I mean, other than Kurt Angle, but uh, Kurt Angle shouldn't, I guess, come down to ringside. I mean, not yet. Not until Jason Jordan gets really fucked over, right? So... Um, with Miz having Maurice and, um, and, and the Miz Taraj, those poor bastards who get no gimmick of their own. Um, I'm expecting this to be a Miz win, um, because it carries forward the feud and it makes Jason Jordan more relevant. If Jason Jordan just out and out wins and then WWE, WWE does what it normally does and then buries a new champion, you're sort of, well, we'll be left with a Jason Jordan that might not be um, relevant for a while. So let's just pretend for a moment that they want to keep building Jason Jordan for a little while before they shit on him. And uh, I don't think they're going to have him win this one. I think you're going to you're going to look for uh, Miz winning. Maybe Jason Jordan gets the win with Miz getting DQ'd. I don't know, but um, I'm calling a Miz win straight up. You know, probably referee being a fucking moron and not catching the 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 interference. So uh, what I'm kind of hoping is that this feud carries forward to the next uh, pay-per-view that's both um, promotions. Or even if it just carries and carries until the new year. It, but we don't get those kind of things anymore. Uh, let's be honest. Um, we don't really get long six months builds or anything like that anymore. So I'm thinking what you're going to end up having happening here is probably survivor series blow off, uh, between these two. And if they do give it to Jason Jordan again, they, they might give it to him, but they'll ultimately give it to him and then pull it after a little while. Um, we'll give him a chance to really get his feet wet and then it'll be fuckery and he'll be buried and whatever else. So I'll call him is obviously no title change. Um, We'll sign some points to these, I think, like we used to. Half a point for calling a title change and a full point for calling the match. That's what we'll do. Old school way. All right, next up on the card, uh, Alexa Bliss as the champion versus Sasha Banks, Bailey, Nia Jax, and Emma um, for a fatal five-way for the women's title. You know, because it's um, uh, the women's revolution. So what we're going to do is we're going to only have one women's match on a card, and we're going to jam every fucking woman we can into that one match. Because, you know, women's revolution. It's um, oh my God. phenomenal, right? It's, it's, there's nothing wrong with that, is there? No? 
I mean, again, the build for this has been a little muddled at best um, because you've got Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax feuding and then not feuding and then feuding and then not feuding. And then you've got Bailey and Banks feuding and then not feuding and feuding and not feuding. And then Emma's just basically feuding with Twitter. So there is that. Um, at least her, at least her little rants about starting the women's revolution is legit. I mean, I know that wrestling has short term memory loss. So for those of you just tuning in now, the women's revolution legit kicked off with Paige versus Emma at an NXT pay-per-view. Uh, one of the first ones. And that was what quote unquote started the women's revolution. So at least, at least her gimmick, like at least the, the build for her character is on point. The rest of it is the usual wrestling. I'm jealous of you. Blah 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 blah. Shit. So, um, I'm, I'm interested. I'm actually interested in Emma's part of this build. Um, what I'm kind of proposing in this one is okay. So my proposal for this one is that Emma wins, and Survivor Series should have a Survivor Series match, and it should be. Raw versus SmackDown. And of course, the champion of each, you know, brand should be in that mix. So if they have a Team Raw versus a Team SmackDown, and then you've got, you know, Emma is, is the heel and everyone fucking hates her because she's cutting promos on everybody on Twitter and shit like that, that builds more and more and more stuff. And then you've got the Royal Rumble coming up. So maybe it'd be kind of cool to have a Royal Rumble match with all these May Young Classic women wrestlers still hopefully kicking around. That you could have like a SmackDown Royal Rumble, maybe not 30 women, maybe like, you know, the way that Bret Hart and the original Royal Rumble was, which is just 20. Maybe it's 20 and 20. Uh, maybe they can't get that many women. I don't know. It would be kind of fun, though, to have a Royal Rumble with the 30 women, and then whoever wins gets to pick whichever title they go after, kind of like they do with the main um, championship. Um, and then that way, at the, you know, that way you could have Nia Jax win that or you know whoever the fuck you're building at at that fucking popcorn fart of a brief second and uh then you could you know work on it from there but i just i feel like of all of the women that were involved in the quote-unquote ribbons revolution emma's the only one that hasn't had like a legit title run and um listen you can love her or hate her and i and i will admit that i'm biased as all fucking hell because she was trained up here but uh, it would be kind of nice to just give the give the lady a fucking title run once in a while. I don't know. Let her see. Let us let's see what she can do with it. Heel champions are much more interesting than face champions, and um, you know Alexa Bliss makes a great heel champion, but she's busy feuding with Nia Jax, and you know Bailey and Banks are busy feuding with each other. So why not? Why not have somebody who's pissing everybody off as the champion? That'd be great. It'd be like a she'd be the Rowdy Roddy Piper, the women's division, with the mouth running and everything. It's just that now she's got Twitter to run her mouth on too. So anyways, I'm, uh, I'm calling Emma for this one and, of course, winning the title. Um, that'd be great. I'd like to see that. Um, let's be perfectly honest. The, the pre-show match um, is booked as Cruz and Elias. Um, and it's only a one-hour pre-show match, so that's going to be the only one that you have. So uh, I think what's going to end up happening is you're going to have uh, Neville and Enzo in their mix. Um, I'm going to say... Maybe I see title, like maybe it is the order that I've been reading on this website. Maybe it's the I see title, but I'm thinking that Enzo and Neville are going to be low on the card. Uh, and not because it's a, a slight against them or anything like that. I, I happen to like Enzo. I know a lot of people don't. I, I know that there's rumors of him having legit heat in the locker room and shit like that. Um, but I, I really don't care. I, the guy's over as fuck, and it'd be kind of nice to uh, see him as, the, as the, like he's, he's completely at this point irrelevant. Uh, he's been the tag team that he was in for the better part of what two three years is gone um he was annihilated by his former tag team partner not once not twice not three times but like a fucking dozen times um it would be nice to give the guy a fucking win so that he can stay relevant so that the fans continue to chant with him because if you keep burying him at some point eventually people will stop fucking doing the stupid promo part with him and and i heard some accusations that his promos are the same every time and while yes they all start off the same but listen so did mr perfect start off the, the same at the beginning so does everybody's fucking deal start off the same for everybody 
So it'd be nice uh, to, you know, make them relevant by uh, giving them the strap for a little while. I don't know. It'd be kind of cool. No? Maybe? I don't know. I'm calling Enzo to win this one, though. Neville's had the belt for a long time. He doesn't need the belt to get over. He's just fucking over his shit. Um, the 205 is not over his shit. So maybe putting the title on Enzo could do something for the 205 brand. Because clearly, Neville as a champion isn't doing dick for the 205 brand. And I know that it's still being treated like the redheaded stepchild, but I mean, if, the, if the idea would be that your champion would hopefully bring some eyeballs to your shit, and again, like having them as the sort of second fiddle uh, to the Raw brand doesn't help them very much. It'd be nice if they were just sort of on their own. I mean, these guys were all wrestling in the indies and drawing crowds on their own. There's no reason to think that they wouldn't draw a crowd if, Cruiser, if the um, you know, Cruiserweight division had its own goddamn pay-per-view. But, uh, you know, that's just me. Uh, next up is uh, Finn Balor versus Bray Wyatt. There's been teasings of uh, the the demon return. Um, like, here's the thing: uh, don't forget that these guys had the match at SummerSlam, and n- now we're back to this again. And at SummerSlam, the demon won, and it's possible that since all the promo posters don't have him in the demon makeup and shit, that he doesn't come out with the demon makeup on, so that WWE can give Bray the win make it to a rubber match at the next big pay-per-view who knows um the build for this is so weird and and the reason why it's weird is because the wwe creative is really struggling to figure out what the fuck to do with bray wyatt they is it's just me that feels that way like they constantly put this guy in promos and and feuds and shit like that and listen he spins gold out of absolute horse shit but it's like the 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 impetus behind their booking the feud makes no sense. Um, him having a beef with Balor makes no sense. Um, no matter how many fucking times they keep changing the promos that he gives, it still don't make no goddamn sense. And it just fucking, I don't know. It's weird and it sucks. And I, I don't know. It's very weird. But I mean, if we're going to end up seeing this as, uh, you know, why it wins this one. And then that's the rubber match. And then you end up with the fucking, the third and final match, you know, whatever, then great, good, fine, Bray Wyatt wins. But I still, I kind of feel like the WWE is still really high on on Balor, and Bray Wyatt doesn't need anything to get over. I mean, he hasn't won in how long, so he doesn't really need to win. Um, I, I don't think that either of them are going to win. I think this is going to be like things will go too far during the match, and the ref will just throw the whole thing out. Like both guys get DQ'd. That's my call on this one. Just Both guys just full on get DQ'd and it's just a total blow off to the next pay-per-view. That one maybe will be the rubber match. And maybe that one would be at survivor series or, um, even at the rumble or something like that. And that one maybe would be the one where the demon finally loses or something like that. But the demon losing to Bray Wyatt, I don't know. They've done so much building with the demon that it seems odd that they would fuck that up now. Where, uh, <laughs> Whereas if Strowman wins the title and uh, and Balor comes out as the demon and people think that, oh, the, oh, the demon never loses and then Strowman destroys him, that'd be an interesting way to just to end the demon's winning streak. I don't know. I, but the, for this one, I'm calling it double DQ. Uh, I just think things are going to go too far and the ref's just going to call it out and that's going to be the end of it. So, um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens with it. It'd be interesting to see. Um, next up. Raw Tag Championship, Ambrose and Rollins, Cesaro and Sheamus. Um, It's another thing where the WWE has spent time building Rollins and Ambrose, and now they don't have anything for these guys to do individually, and they don't have anything for Cesaro and Sheamus to do individually, and creative seems to be spinning its wheels. Like They haven't come up with anything new or interesting to do with these guys. It's the shield versus two guys that wear utility kilts. And I don't know. It's the thing is that the WWE kind of sometimes tips its hat. And it seems like a lot of what's been going on is there's been build towards, uh, like an inner promotional match, uh, Ambrose and Rollins versus the Usos, or even possibly that the Usos next loss kicks them off a of SmackDown and they have to go to raw, which I would be very weird but there's been a lot of talk about that shit too but i'm expecting ambrose and rollins to hold on to the belt for a while uh the belts for a while um i'm still 
going to say that this match is going to be match of the night contender because these four guys tend to put on really fun matches, um, both from a wrestling standpoint and also from a whole gimmick standpoint. So, I don't know. That's my opinion on it anyways. Who the fuck knows? We'll see what happens with it. Um, next match is uh, John Cena versus Roman Reigns, um, a match in which everyone loses. So you're welcome for that. All right. I mean, WWE is going to keep shoving Roman Reigns down our throats um, until they start saying things about him that they used to say about Cena. Well, you know, he's shit for a wrestler, but he's a nice guy. I like the guy. I got a lot of respect for him. And um, they're just going to keep doing it. They fed Taker to Reigns. They're going to feed Cena to him. They're just going to keep doing shit like that. And really all of the build here was basically fourth wall breaking jokes um, and then just repeating yourselves over and over and over again. So uh, the build's been boring. Um, I guess if you like, like if you're one of those people that giggles to when things are breaking the fourth wall, uh, wrestling's kind of done that forever. Like I get when it's funny when it happens in a Deadpool movie, but it's kind of not as funny when it happens in wrestling because that's called a shoot and it happens all the fucking time. It's, it's old hat in the wrestling world. So John Cena and Roman Reigns shooting on each other during a fucking promo that was quote unquote scripted, unscripted, depending on which creative department employee you ask and how many fucking beers they've had in them. Um, I don't know. I, Roman Reigns is going to win um, only because they're just going to keep feeding wrestlers to this guy until people stop booing him. Or at least until he accepts the fact that he sucks. I don't know. Like, don't get me wrong. Roman Reigns put it on an entertaining enough match. It's it's the fucking promos that have always sucked the worst. Like he he gets in front of the mic, and even when he's cutting promos where he quote unquote doesn't care, you can just see in his eyes that he gives a shit. Like he cares. Like John Cena did too once upon a time. You could see that it bro. They kind of broke their heart a little bit when the fucking WWE fans wouldn't cheer for them. And I, I feel like this is just going to be more of the same. It's just going to be more of Roman Reigns uh, looking like somebody just kicked his puppy every time he has to do a heel promo. And there's no way for him to get over as a face because people just shit all over him. So they'll just keep feeding him wrestlers until people come to terms with it, I guess. Or he gets fired. But let's be honest, people are going to have to come to terms with it because he's not going anywhere. Uh, finally, the um, the main event. Jesus Christ, I punch in and out of this one. Uh, the main event is uh, Brock Lesnar as your champion going up against Braun Strowman for the Universal title. Um, two stiff monkeys trying to put on a fake fight. Yay! I mean, is, does anyone think that this match isn't going to be cringeworthy? The, anybody? Any Bueller? Anybody? Does, because this is going to be a little cringeworthy. I mean, listen, Lesnar has gotten a lot better since his return. But Strowman forgets that he's a wrestler sometimes, and Lesnar definitely forgets he's a wrestler sometimes, and you see a lot of stiff monkey shit, and you see a lot of like stuff that makes you kind of go, oh, Jesus, fuck, that, god damn. This is supposed to be a staged fight here, boys. Um, I think legitimately you're going to look at um, real fight fans are going to be disappointed because it won't be real enough to satisfy them. And... Wrestling fans aren't going to be satisfied because it'll be way too real, um, which is just fucking weird sometimes how we wrestling fans react to shit. Um, but it's just going to be it's going to be chaos. It's just going to be two big, uh, admittedly strong, athletic fucking guys bashing heads together uh, like mountain goats. So um, this is just this is one of those matches that looks really good on paper, but I don't think it's really going to deliver. Uh, in front of a in front of an audience, but whatever. Uh, as far as calling who's going to win this one, I, I feel like um, Lesnar. The joke goes, but it's true. So it's a joke that's based on fact. Lesnar's a part time champion. He's rarely on Raw. Rarely does house. Even more rarely does he do house shows. And Raw kind of needs a champion that's there because right now it's all on Miz or the tag titles. Or they're going to just put it on Cena and Reigns to try to fucking carry the show, which is a goddamn pain to watch. So they kind of need a champion that is going to be around. And it'd be kind of 
the usual WWE thing, but still it's done well most of the time uh, where you would have Braun Strowman as the monster, the the monster champion that, uh, that all comers try to take out. I mean, he could end up being like an Andre type champ that just stays on top for a long time. And again, long time by today, WWE standards is like four to six months. So let's just take that with a grain of salt. Um, but listen, it, it it'd be fine to keep him on top until you've got a face built up enough to take him on. Obviously, listen, that's not going to be Jason Jordan, but could that be uh, a Balor? Sure. Could they try to put Reigns in there? Absolutely. Could they put Rollins against them? Sure. Ambrose against them? Absolutely. Cesaro, Sheamus, because of where Strowman is, you could basically put the entire face and heel locker room up against them one by one pay-per-view after pay-per-view and just keep them on top until you've got somebody that you really need to put over. And then, you know, Strowman can get buried to see if he's going to be a bitch about it. And uh, because that's how WWE does things. They build a person up, they build the champion up the fucking just sky high. And then they make them lose the title. And then they lose, 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 lose to see if they'll continue to perform well. Um, they do it all the time. There's plenty of examples. I don't need to point any out. Although, of course, Ziggler is the all-time favorite one. But um, it's um, it, it, like expect. I, I'm expecting Strowman to be the champion. What I would like to see. Um, I don't know if it's going to come to pass. But what I would like to see um, is this to turn into a longer program where you have Strowman beats Lesnar. Lesnar goes away for a while, and he's already a part-time champion, so it doesn't matter if he goes away for a while. He'll get pops no matter how he comes back, when he comes back. Uh, so it doesn't matter when you bring him back. And you feed a bunch of guys to Strowman uh, to solidify his championship reign. And then you bring Lesnar back for WrestleMania to take on Strowman for the strap. And that would be one of your big main events, of course, um, along with another fucking Undertaker match, but whatever. So you build that now. You start it now. I, like it's a raw brand pay-per-view you have Strowman win the title here and then maybe at wrestlemania depending on how over this guy is by wrestlemania maybe he drops it to lesnar maybe he doesn't maybe he drops it to the winner of the royal rumble maybe the winner of the royal rumble is lesnar again who knows but i think it's probably a good bet that Strowman walks away with the title tonight um lesnar's had it for quite a while i i don't mind lesnar as the champion i just wish he was around more often and as the as the raw championship like the universal title should probably be around a lot more it's just it's smackdown has their champion they have the the universe the u.s title they've got their tag champions and they got their women's champion all four of their champions around all the fucking time on raw you're missing a champion and it shows in the ratings people don't want to see the be all end all title never being defended no one's ever going after it and when they do go after it they basically just get jobbed out to brock lesnar now don't get me wrong jobbed out in this way is pretty positive because let's remember that samoa joe put on quite a few matches that were fucking amazing with uh, brock lesnar i would kind of like to see uh stroman take the strap do something with it for a little while um become a monster champion for a bit who the fuck knows i think it'd be fun um, neither Glenn nor Rebel will agree with me, of course, from last night's uh, show there. So uh, let's see. It'd be nice to see how it goes. Really, the only things we disagreed on uh, were the women's match, but of course, you've got five women to choose from there. Uh, the Baylor Bray Wyatt match we all disagreed on, and then this one. Everything else was pretty much universally agreed upon. Um, so again, like this should show that there's. Not a lot of surprise um, expected on a lot of this shit. So, anyways, that's it for me. I'm tapping out at the 30-minute mark. So, there's a short but sweet one. Uh, I might come back next week just to go over what happened at the pay-per-view. We'll see what happens with it. Uh, for now, though, go ahead. Watch the show however it is you watch the show. Listen, I'm not endorsing shit, but I'm just saying. Watch the show however the fuck you're going to watch the show. Um, I've got the network, so I'm going to tune into that shit. And, uh, let's see the pre-show starts in uh, about 45 minutes or so from when this was, uh, when this was recorded. So enjoy that shit and, uh, we'll see you, see you fucking animals next time. All right. Get out of here. Get out of here. Fuck out of here. Go on. Get going. Get going. Well, 
that was an abortion of a show. Should the mood take you, check out MarkOutRadio.com and leave a comment. You can also find links there to our Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Stitcher channels. You can even leave a voicemail on our Skype. Just click the links and share them.